In this video, I'm going to show you how to fit the butterfly clasp to the flap of a bag. These are the two kits that we had on Crate and Craft. I just want to show you different styles of bag. We don't have the kits for these available anymore, but we do have the clasps available for you in two different colours. So I think it's a very elegant clasp and it suits many different styles of bag as well, whether using a plain fabric or a pattern. And it's nice and secure when it locks as well. But I do have some hints and tips for you on how to fit this and make it simple. So this is how we do it. So these are the tools that you're going to need to make life a little bit easier. You will need a very sharp pair of small scissors, um, a tailor's awl, or you can use a quick and pick, but you're going to find that easier if you have the tool. You'll need a marking pen and a tiny cross head screwdriver. Magnetic would be preferable. So you've already made up the flap. Now I'm using a Bosal foam in the center of mine. You will need some kind of foam or fleece um, because that's as thick as the, um, as the clasp is. So you need to fill that gap basically. So if you're just going to put this on one piece of fabric, it's going to be very loose, it won't fit properly. Um, so the first thing we need to do here, the clasp is in three parts. You'll see that the bit that has the tongue on it, those need bending out a little bit. I don't know why they come bent in, but that's no problem, just bend those so they're straight. And on the butterfly itself, there are three screws in the back. So let's take these out and don't lose them because we don't get any more on their own. So just pop those to one side. Like so. And then we're going to do this from the back. And a little tip for you, if you've used a single side of fusible as I have here, I'm going to spray a little bit of basting spray inside just to stick the lining to the stabiliser. may find that helps. So let's just stretch that out and make it fit. Then we need to measure the centre point of our flap, so exactly where we want the clasp to sit. And when you consider the size of it, you don't want it too close to the very edge. So I'd say that about a three quarter of an inch away from the bottom is where I want the actual um, clasp to sit. So I'm just going to put a mark around about there and then re-measure to find the exact center of the flap, which will be four inches, which is actually pretty much spot on where I drew my mark. Okay, then we'll take the back of the clasp and we're going to place that in position and draw around the hole in the centre. And then we'll cut this hole out. Do this in stages because it's um, a lot easier to cut out a hole that's too small and make it bigger rather than cut out a hole that's too big and then you'll have to make another flap up because there's no concealing a large hole with a, um, a clasp like this. Another tip for you, if you have a fabric that frays a lot, so if you have bought one of the kits that um, I showed you earlier from Create and Craft with a brocade that does tend to fray, there's no harm in putting a little fray check or fray stop around the edge of the hole if you have any. Okay, so now we're going to have a fitting. So place this in from the front and then just push that through to the back. The hole's not quite big enough, so I'm just going to snip away at it until it's the right size. Again, this is the, the best way to do it rather than just make a big hole to start with. So just keep snipping away tiny pieces and keep refitting the clasp until you've got a nice snug fit. So let's pop that through again. Just going to stretch that over a little bit. I think we need a little tiny bit more off one side. So it may seem a little bit fiddly, but you know, it's so worth it. These clasps look so elegant and so expensive and they're so pretty and they are a very strong quality as well. So once this is screwed on, it's on. I think that's an absolute perfect fit. So it's nice and tight, but it fits just around the edge there. Now the next thing we need to do is first of all, make sure this is straight because that's not quite. Let's turn it so that it sits flat. 
and then we'll need to make holes where the screws go. Now you're going to have to feel those. So there's three of them. I know there's one here. So I'm just going to put my pen in the centre of the, um, the screw hole. And there. And one here. Just there. And then we'll need to make a hole all the way through. So again, if you have a tailor's awl, this is ideal because it'll make the hole. And as you push it through, because of the size of the awl, it just makes that hole a little bit bigger if you need it to be. If you wanted to use a quick unpick, then of course that's, that's an option if you don't have one of these tools to hand, but they, they really are worth the investment. So you've got proper holes in there now, you can see through them. Looks like a little face. Um, if you use a quick unpick, you're going to have a little split, but you know, just, just be careful that that split doesn't grow too much. So again, push that through. And then clasp goes back on the right side, making sure it's straight. You can give these another poke just to make sure that they're sitting on top of the screw holes or push them back a little bit away from the, away from the threads. And then we'll take the back and this sits over the top and it's got the three holes there for the three screws to go through. We'll trim that back later. And then we'll pop the screws in. So this is where a magnetic screwdriver comes in handy because it kind of holds onto the screw as we're doing it. So let's pop that in the hole there and screw it. You may not get it in the perfect place first time. So have a little wiggle around until, oh, there we go, until it goes in there. And that's screwed in. And then we need to do the same with this one and with the bottom one as well. Now, if you do have any little frayed bits on the inside of the hole, then you can simply snip those off at this point. But that's the outer clasp finished and fitted. This you would then sew to the back of your bag. So just sew straight across here, close to the edge, just to hold that in place. And then flip it over. If you have the two pieces of your bag as they would be, flip this one over and mark where you want the position of the second half of the clasp to go. So this will be sewn in place. So and again, I'm only showing you this just to show how to fit the clasps, not how to make a bag on this one. So don't have that too tight. So maybe start an inch from the top there. And let's mark, as we did before, the position where we want it to be. And then just measure again to make sure that that's in the centre. So that's 11, so that's 5, that's practically there, like that. And then take the back of the lock, sit it over the position where you want that to be, and just make a mark on the outside um, holes. And then either with your quick and pick or your sharp pair of scissors, we're going to make a little split over those two lines. And again, don't make the holes too big. Better to have them too small and then make them bigger if you need to. And then the two prongs will fit through the holes like so. Let's turn that over and oh, put a thread on there and then place the back on. And I'm going to squish those prongs outwards. It doesn't really matter whether they go out or in. You probably find it easier to squish them out. And that's the lock um, side finished. So then this goes over the top. That twists around. And your bag is nice and secure.